tell me, Joe, what does creating extraordinary mean to you? What's interesting is, until I met you, I'd never considered that extraordinary was two words. I'd always said, is it extraordinary? So I just strung it on together. I'd never considered the gravity of what that meant. And I think for most of my life, I'd been living a very ordinary, by my interpretation, life. And I was kind of going through the motions, playing by the rules. And the extra part for me comes from when I began to break away from the rules. And I think what it comes down to is I've, I've experienced over the last couple of years, well, last two or three years, but particularly the last six to eight months, is just tapping into my heart space and let that, that rule my head. Because for my entire life, my head has been in control. And my head has been the part of me that's, that's allowed others to influence and dictate how I played out my ordinary life. Um, and in allowing, giving myself permission to be more me, and I'm still finding out what me is, um, and letting that process evolve, and just, just being, just coming from that heart centre space over the head space, that's what extraordinary is. Um, but just, just, just allowing that distinction, you know, that, acknowledging those two words within that one word, is that in itself a big, a big thing? You know, what is ordinary and so therefore what is extraordinary. Um, yeah, and it's allowing, allowing, it's living from the heart. What do you notice when you're in your heart space? Life just flows. Um, it's, it's almost as if you, you tap into the kind of the energy force that's like behind the scenes that runs the universe, you're part of that. You're not just you. Um, as a singular, sort of, yeah, you, you're tapping into a, a much larger energy, a higher energy, whatever words you want to, you want to use. I, I would say I'm a much more spiritual person than I used to be, and it's something I'm, I'm deeply exploring as it's actually had such a profound imp impact on me. I wouldn't say I'm particularly religious, and once upon a time, okay, you know, not so long ago, I wouldn't have been able to distinguish between religious and spiritual. But now I can, and it's something that I'm really enjoying exploring um, and yeah I've just forgotten your question this seems to happen a lot um, what was your question <laughs> uh, what do you notice when you're in your heart space yeah yeah so but I allow others to share it much more readily because I'm not I haven't got the noise in around what I should be when I'm in my head, um, I tend to talk myself out of opportunities or um, just I project or I, I've just got, I've got a million one conversations all about things that have never happened and I prevent opportunities from ever arising and I, and I prevent, I don't allow myself to put myself out there as if I'm not worthy of that. Um, And the value, and it, was, it was a realisation, a very recent realisation that I place value on, on a physical environment or something I can, it's a, has a tangible quality, but I struggle to give value to my energetic environment. When I'm in my heart space, I'm totally there. I'm like, I can see the value and I can, I can give that and, I, and I'm, I'm so there, but when I'm, when I'm in my head, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, yeah, it's just, it's a really interesting dynamic. Um, so all the more reason for getting into my heart as my default mode. Um, because everything just makes sense, it just is. And there is no noise. Um, and, there, and yeah, and there's no... You know, I, t I typically kind of need to know things. Someone will say something and I say, but, but why, but why? I have a lot of kind of but whys around things, but when I'm in my heart space, I don't need to know the why because it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. 
Um, if it feels right, then it is right. And it's just, you know, so, so different to being in the kind of analytical kind of rah, noise environment. And so in coming from that space and being able to share it with others and allowing them to step into that for themselves, whether it be for an hour, for a day, for a week, or whatever it might be, and giving people permission to do that, you know, for, for so many years, I didn't realise that, you know, I could be extraordinary. I didn't. I didn't I didn't I didn't know that was an option until a few years ago when, when that was kind of presented to me and sort of my life was flipped on its head and I thought, oh you know, I don't have to play by the rules and it almost felt a bit naughty, like, yeah, I don't have to play by the rules. Um, and so that's when I began to step into the extraordinary. That was a real slow process. But but now instead of needing to get to an end goal I am totally cool with the fact that this is the end, the journey is the end goal in itself. I'm I'm for the first time in my life, I think over the last few months, I'm embracing the journey rather than needing to be somewhere. And that's a real big shift for me. And that's all about coming from the heart. That is the extraordinary. Um, yeah. So creating that for myself and then sharing that energy because it has so much more meaning when it's shared with a wider, with others. You know, intensifies it so, so much. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That was eight minutes.